Um, so at the end, uh, this old man shuffles up with a cane and he came up to the front and he waved, raised his cane and he said to the people, this is the man I've been telling you about. Well, I didn't know what he was talking about, but he was an elder at the church and, um, and everybody just went crazy and started clapping and screaming and everything. So afterwards we said, what was that about? And he, that, well, it turned out that he was in World War II. He was a German or a Russian Jew and he was killed in Auschwitz. And, and I think it was Auschwitz, one of the camps. He was thrown into the ovens as a Jew and he was, a, he was a, not a Christian. Uh, anyway, he went to hell. And somebody pulled him out and resuscitated him and brought him back. And so he wrote a book about his experience in hell. And he said, he prayed, Lord, have somebody someday come that will verify what I saw. Somebody, someday. So anyway, when he said, this is the man, that was in you know, 1944. And here he is, you know, 60 years later, his prayer was answered. So that was really humbling for me to be an answer to this guy's prayer. I thought, wow, Lord, that's, that's incredible. But, but the important things are people that's gotten saved. We had one pastor that had sent a book to a lady, and he sent a DVD of me, or a CD of me speaking at a church. And the lady didn't know what it was, so she started playing it. Her son walked through the room at the time, and he was in his 30s. He had just gotten out of prison. He'd been in prison for like 20 years. And he'd been on drugs, and, and he would never listen to anything about the Bible. And he sat down and he started listening to the CD. Well... At the end of the CD, she was amazed that he was listening, but at the end of the CD, he fell on his knees and he said, I've got to get saved. And he asked the Lord to be Lord of his life. It totally blew her away that her son finally, after all these 20 years, would get saved. But anyway, six hours later, he died in his sleep. And he was going to go to church the next morning. He was all excited and said, I'm going to testify that God saved me. I'm, I'm changing my life. I'm a Christian now. He was all excited, but the drugs killed his body. He was so far gone. But the mother was so thrilled that he got saved right before he died you see so that's what's that's what's important you know that people get saved through all this and you know you might be here tonight and you might be saying to yourself you know I'm a pretty good person so I I don't think I'm, I'm not going to go to that place I'm pretty good well you probably are pretty good compared to yourself but you can't compare to yourself you see none of us can compare to ourselves we have to compare to God and his standard is a lot higher than ours. His standard is perfect. So he said in his word, if you ever lie once, he said you'll have your part in the lake of fire, Revelation 21.8. If you ever commit fornication, if you have a thought towards adultery or fornication, if you even think it, that's a sin. If you steal one thing, just one thing in your life, that you, makes you a thief and you can't go to heaven. So you see, we all are blown it. We all fall far short of God's uh, goodness and His standard. You know, it's like, uh, if you compare, it's like a lady that saw the sheep on the hill and she said, you know, she looked at these white sheep and how pure and white they looked. And against the green hill, they looked so pure and white. And overnight she went to bed and it snowed. She got up and looked at the sheep the next morning and they were all dingy and dull compared to the white snow. So you see, if you compare yourself with God, you don't look so good. Matter of fact, he says your righteousness is as filthy rags to him. It says in Isaiah 64, 6. And um, it even goes on to say uh, in, um, oh, where is that scripture? It talks about in Job 15, 16. How much more abominable and filthy is man who drinks iniquity like water? So that's how we look to God, filthy. But you want to make sure, if you're here tonight, that your name is in the book of life. Because... I want to give you three scriptures. This is the bad news, and I want to tell you the good news. But he said in Second Thessalonians 1 9, whoever does not obey the gospel shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. And John 3 36 says, He that has the Son has everlasting life, but he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And in Revelation 20 15 says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, that lake. Are you sure tonight that your name is written in the book of life? Because this is something you've got to be absolutely certain about, absolutely positive about. You don't even want to take one slight chance on it because you don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know you might not live till tomorrow. So you don't want to take a chance. If you don't know for sure, if there's anybody here tonight that does not know absolutely positively that their name is written in the book of life. 
I want you to take a bold statement and just raise your hand and say, you know, I don't know. I don't know for sure. And I don't know if I've ever really repented of my sin because Jesus said that you have to repent. You know, if you don't repent, he said, you shall all likewise perish. And uh, so if you don't know if you've ever repented and asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, if you've never asked him in your heart, I want you to do something and, and raise your hand and just say, I'm humble enough to admit, I don't know, I can't say that I've ever done that. I've never really received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I've never really repented. And I don't know if my name's in the book of life. Would you raise your hand? Anybody here raise their hand and say that? Thank you for your honesty. I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. I see those hands. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. You know, if you just don't want to take a chance because I'm telling you, this place is real. Uh, you can think I'm crazy, but the Scripture says it. And the place that you saw in the film, it's way worse than that. And it lasts for eternity. You know, and, and a lot of people, they'll check out if they're going to go to Europe for a trip. You'll check out the hotels. You'll do all the research. You know, to check out just for a vacation. You'll do all kinds of research. Well, you know, but hardly anybody checks out eternity, you know, and wh where you go forever. You, we need to know. So I really urge you tonight not to leave here unless you know absolutely for sure. And you can know for sure. You can raise your hand. You can come forward. We're going to pray for you in a little bit. But you can leave here with the assurance that you'll never have to go to this place and never fear any of it. Because there's no reason you have to fear it because you don't have to go there. But I want to make people aware of it so that you can see there is a real hell and, and you want to avoid it at all costs. You know, also, there's a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians that are living in a, in really kind of a backslidden state. Many of us, you know, don't live the way we should live. And there's people that are saved, but they're, you know, they're living in some kind of sin. You know, and you can't be living in sin. You don't want to be living in a backslidden state where maybe you, uh, you know, you're living in a, a, you know, you're not married and you're living with your girlfriend or your boyfriend and you think that's okay and you're getting away with it. God doesn't think that's all right. You do not want to live that way. And, uh, you know, the Scripture says in um, Romans 8.13, if you live after the flesh, you'll die. And Jesus said, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter into life maimed than enter into hell fire. So if your eye, and the word offend means causes you to sin. So if you're doing something, if you're in the pornography if you're, just like you said, living with your girlfriend, if you're uh, living some compromised lifestyle, you don't want to do that. He said that you're in danger of hell fire. So why would you want to take a chance and live like that? So we, I would urge you to try to get it right with the Lord tonight and commit to Him because living for Him, your life is way better anyway. He's going to bless your life. He's going to increase everything that you do and prosper you and work out everything that you have and take you to heaven in the end. Now, what kind of deal? That's a good deal that God's given us. Amen?